Hey, welcome back to the College Cooking Show. On this episode, we're talking steak and we're going fucking fast. Let's get cooking. I'm a private chef, cook for money, yeah. Steak. Steak, steak, steak. Steak is fucking awesome. We all know that. I'm working with a New York strip today. It's the cheapest cut of steak that you can use that doesn't require marinades and tenderization. Fuck it. Don't get me wrong, I love flank steaks, I love skirt steaks, but those you have to get the, as I showed in my last video, you have to get the fork out and you have to get the marinades and it's a 12 hour process. This is the cheapest cut that you can use that you can just sear up in a pan and eat in, you know, 10, 15 minutes. The thing I love about New York strip is you still have this nice fat cap on the side and you still have some good marbleization inside the steak. Not quite as much as the ribeye, but it's still delicious. It's still super easy to cook. Okay, so the biggest thing with steak, any steak you're cooking, always take it out of the fridge half an hour before. Let it come to room temperature. Steak's a muscle. Think about it. If you're if you're an athlete and you're about to go for a fucking run or a swim or whatever you're gonna do, you wanna warm up, you wanna loosen up. Cause if you put this in the hot pan cold, just like an athlete, you're gonna tighten up, you're gonna fucking pull a muscle, it's not gonna taste as good. So you want it to come to room temperature, really warm up so when you put it in that pan, ah, it's nice and relaxed, it's stretched, it's done, it's dynamic warm up, it's ready to go. The flavor's gonna be much better, the texture's gonna be much better, your whole meal is gonna be much better. Just let your steak warm up. Okay, after you've done that, super simple, salt, you want a nice coarse sea salt, nothing too fine because you really want some crunch on that. You really want that crust to be able to build. The salt and pepper are gonna help that. Salt and then always fresh ground back black pepper. Boom, just like that. And that's all you need. Let's head over to the pan and let's get cooking. All right, for steaks, we're going high heat. If you have windows, open the windows. If you have smoke alarms, unplug the smoke alarms. If you have a fan, a hood like this, turn that bitch on because we're gonna make some smoke. You want the pan smoking. You honestly want to wait till you see smoke in the pan you gotta get that sear on it. Really with any meat, but with steak especially, is you have to get that sear, that crust on the bottom, because what that does is it seals it up and locks in all those juices, so none of your flavor escapes. So now, see, the pan's starting to smoke. It's heating up. We'll do the water test one more time. Boom, now they're jumping out. That's exactly what we want. Olive oil. Olive oil in the pan. Yeah, that's hot. Now, see, it's starting to smoke. That's what you want to see. It's, I told you, open the windows, turn the vents on, because it's gonna get messy. Steak, take it, lay away from you, and then pat it down. And then don't touch it. You're not gonna move the steak. You're gonna let that sear build. We're gonna get that crust, the perfect sear. So as our steak's cooking, we're just gonna take, we're gonna use this to baste it at the end. So you're gonna take some garlic, and you don't have to chop it. All you gotta do is smash it, expose it. Some, some rosemary, some thyme, any herb you have, any fresh herb really, even if it's dried, you can, you can do the same thing. You wanna take your garlic and rosemary and just crush it up. We're gonna go check back on our steak. Our steak's been ripping on a high heat for like two minutes now. Now's when you check it. Oh, see, if the steak moves about freely in the pan, if it can kind of skirt about, that means it's ready to flip. If you have any kind of resistance at all, any kind of stick, do not flip it. That means that seal has not, there's, there's no crust yet. So it's gonna pull and it's gonna just stretch it right off it and you've lost your sear. So make sure you can move it around in the pan and then go in for the flip. Lay away from you. Wow, look at that sear. That's exactly what we want. We got that nice, beautiful crust on the outside. The hard part is done. I'm gonna let it sear off on the other side. I like my steaks medium rare. I don't think you should cook anything over medium rare. If you like them well done, I don't know. If this show isn't for you, I'll combine something else. Just microwave your steak, because basically you're throwing it away. You wanna take it, and we steak. People have seen this video ever, it's been out there. But to test steak, it really is just like the palm of your hand. So if you, if you feel your palm, feel this, how there's no resistance, there's no giveaway, that's well done. You never want that. Right in here, it's a little bit softer. There's a little bit more fat. There's a little bit more give back. That's medium, medium well. And here in the fleshy, that's like rare, medium rare. That's, so you want it kind of right in this area. That's, that's, that's a rule of thumb. It's not gonna get you perfect every time. But if you take that, you feel your palm, and then you feel the steak. Okay, feels like it's about done. So, when you're at that medium rare state, this is where we take our chopped garlic and our rosemary. We're gonna take our butter, you're gonna take a nice fat knob like that big. And then you're gonna put it in right into that oil. And a little bit more oil. You pour oil on top because it has a higher specific heat. If you remember eighth grade science, specific heat is what things burn at, I think, or what they boil at. This is a higher specific heat than butter. So you wanna put on top of the butter, which slows down that burning process. Your butter's not gonna burn. That's what you want, and then boom. Take our garlic and take our rosemary and just put it right into that oil. So what we're doing now, we're gonna take that butter that's, that's infused with that garlic, with that rosemary, that's all starting to get nice, and just baste it on top of the steak. Just flick that wrist, pour that gorgeous butter right on top. Again, it's about layers of flavor. 
The salt adds a layer. The oil adds a layer. Now the rosemary and the garlic and the butter, they add the final layer, and that's just beautifully done. Look at that. Mm. Smells amazing, and that's it. And then, you're gonna wanna take it off. Take it off the heat. Put it back on your cutting board. Flip your board if you use the raw side so that's clean. And now you have to let it rest. Cooking a steak is one part of the process. Letting it rest is the other. So say we cooked that steak and that was about four or five minutes. You want to let it rest for at least half that time, if not the full five minutes. So at least two and a half minutes, we're going to let that rest. We're going to take the rest of these juices and just pour them right over that. Look at that. All right, so now our steak is resting. I'm going to show you how to make a steak sauce. People always wonder, how do they make steak sauce? Yada, yada, yada. This is how you make a real steak sauce. You're going to want to come over to the pan. You want to go back on heat, high heat. Let me show you something, come here. See all this, all these black bits, all this stuff on the side? That's called the fond, that's pan fond. That is all the flavor of your steak, all the flavor of your seasoning, your salt, your garlic. It's all still in the pan. So, we're gonna make a sauce with it. Heat it up and get red wine. People always ask, do I cook with shitty wine? What's cooking wine, is there a difference? Yes, there is, I've said it in past videos, you never wanna cook with wine that you wouldn't drink with. Because when you cook with wine, you reduce it and you just concentrate the flavor. So if it's a shitty wine, it's a bad wine, if it's Franzia, you're just gonna make that shitty flavor even stronger and that's gonna result in a pretty weak sauce. So I only recommend spending a little bit more on wine that you, you drink and enjoy and then you also cook with when it gets down to the end of the bottle or maybe it's that stuff you never finished. So always keep that in mind. So now our pan's hot, we're gonna go in with wine, just like a glass of wine, maybe half a glass. So, you want to take it and you can see it instantly starts to reduce. And now we go in and we scrape that fawn. So we scrape all those brown bits off, we scrape the side of it, we get all that flavor off the pan. So the thing about it is like, it's cleaning the pan and you're using wine to make the sauce. You're doing two jobs at once, it's fucking amazing. So scrape it down, scrape it down, scrape it down. And then once your wine started to reduce, it's boiled away, the alcohol is cooked off. You take butter, cold butter, and you want to take about a tablespoon Slice it in two. You're gonna take it off the heat. You're gonna go off with it, and then in with cold butter. Cold butter goes in, and you just whisk that in. Our steaks have plenty of time to rest. We've made a quick pan sauce. Now it's time to plate up. A key here is whenever you slice a steak, whether it be already served here or slicing a big one for people, cut against the grain. So if the grain's going this way, cut against it. What that does, it's gonna be a better mouthfeel. It's gonna be hard to chew if you cut with the grain. You're gonna get that and it's gonna be more chewy in your mouth. So cut against the grain. It's cooked beautifully. Now we're gonna take it. Look at that, just set it on the plate. Oh my God, look at that beautiful, medium rare, nice pink. It's just blushing. It's just like you got really embarrassed and you're blushing, your pants fell down or some shit. Look at that, that's what we wanna do. And take our sauce and just go right on top. Oh my God, look at that color. It's just popping. You can even take some of that rosemary. Just, it's already been fried. Sprinkle it back on top. That, my friends, is, oh my God. That's how you make a five-star steak in your kitchen with what, two ingredients, three ingredients? Biggest key is sear, baste, rest. Those three things. All you gotta do, you're gonna have a perfect steak every time. If you wanna make a quick sauce with red wine, you have some wine lying around, it's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt, my friends. That is how you do steak. I'm Chef Donnie. I'll see you next time. Peace. I'm a private chef, cook for money, yeah I'm a mutant, I'm a banshee My girl left me cause she could not understand me Just come back now, hold my hand please Before the voices in my head start to command me Money falling, money calling, it's so 